Texas lawmakers convene in January a man who's been behind bars for 22 years for his part in a Warica teen's brutal murder will be following them closely. How they vote on at least two bills could tell him how many more years he'll be imprisoned. Tonight, in a special report, we're going to take you back to awful events in 1996. We'll talk with one of the convicted killers and the wife he married in prison, whose hopes of an earlier release rest in the next legislative session. At the James V. Allred unit off FM 369 in Wichita County, we've got time to sit together and Talk. Inmate Randy Wood and Larissa Huya were married inside these walls in October 2016. Something I never thought to experience, especially you know while in here. It was a it was a wonderful day. Amazingly, it was really emotional and and special, even though it was you know within the prison walls. Right at 20 years before they exchanged their vows, Wood, now 39, along with fellow teens Josh Bagwell and Curtis Gamble, were charged with the unbelievably heinous murder of 16 year old Heather Rich. Extensive news coverage would follow, trials, the escapes of the other two men, and also television documentaries that still aired around the world. In 2014, Larissa saw the man she'd later marry while watching one of those documentaries in her native New Zealand. I was just so horrified by it that, that someone that young would be sentenced to such a huge t um, term in prison that I, it, it just bothered me. It really bothered me. And for about a month, I couldn't get it out of my head. I was like, I have to just write to him and tell him that there's one person in the world that doesn't think he's a bad person. It all started in October 1996. Heather Rich was listed as a runaway for days after sneaking out of her window to party with Wood, Bagwell, and Gamble. Seven days later, Heather's body was found floating in a Montague County Creek. Randy Wood was crowned Warica's homecoming king that same night. Heather had been a homecoming queen candidate. It's there in my mind when I wake up. It's there in my mind when I go to sleep. This interview in the Montague County Jail in 1998 was recorded just before Wood was taken to prison. As long as I'm awake, I'm thinking about that. To avoid the death penalty, Gamble pleaded guilty to shooting Heather with a shotgun once in the head and eight more times in the back at close range to cover up her rape. But later at Bagwell's trial, he said it was Wood who pulled the trigger. Both Gamble and Bagwell swore Wood fired all the shots in a jealous rage. But former Monte County District Attorney Tim Cole told us in 1998 Wood passed a polygraph test before he was offered a plea bargain. Gamble failed his. I never did it. You didn't do it? Josh knows it. Randy knows that. It focused a lot on it had I did, did I harm her in any way? You know, did, uh, did I did did I kill her? Did I shoot her after she was dead? Um, did Curtis make me shoot her, or did Josh make me shoot her? You know, did I make one of them shoot her? You know, it, it was it was kind of covering all bases, basically. You know, just pertaining to the actual murder. But Wood did admit to putting clothes back on the passed out girl's body after a night of methamphetamine and alcohol in Warica, carrying her to the truck and then helping Bagwell take her body out on a Monte County bridge where Gamble fired all the shots into her unconscious body before she was dropped over the side. You know, up until the point that he, that I heard the gunshots, I had to hope that this was all some weird old dream, some bad dream, and that it was, you know, this was never, it was never this serious, and this is, I don't know what I was expecting to come out of it, but I wasn't expecting this result. So that jurors would not question his testimony during Bagwell's trial, Wood threw away his plea bargain that would have landed him a life sentence and a chance of parole in 30 years instead of the 40 years he later received. It lets me sleep at night. You know, I mean, I, I know that it wasn't the best decision that I could have made, but it, it eased my conscience to know that 
I didn't plead guilty to something that I didn't do. Gamble ended up getting two life sentences, and like Wood, Bagwell's now serving at least 40 years. I look back now and I see I was I was foolish in that, you know, because it, if I had if I had I taken it, you know, in eight more years I'd be eligible for parole. But at the same time, I've been able to somewhat fight my conviction on this basis, you know, on because I didn't, you know, I, I went to trial. And after more than half his life spent behind bars, Wood dreams of freedom beyond the prison walls, while outside, his new allies working to make that dream possible. With the way that the parole law is now, like if he went up for parole in 2036 and he fails in that bid, he has to wait another 10 years before he can apply again, which would make it 15 years or 16 years if he fails again or 17 years. You know, like, that's just crazy. That I mean, I really feel like the, the punishment outweighs the crime, definitely. Hope for the woods lies in bills that never got to a vote on the House and Senate floors in the last Texas legislature. Two bills were introduced providing earlier parole eligibility for inmates convicted of an offense committed when younger than 18. They hope that the 86th Texas legislature beginning in January passes one, it'll be made retroactive by either the courts or lawmakers. I think the overall aspect of them is the same. You know, and it's people that were 17 years old and sentenced to excessive amounts of time will do half of their time, you know, or, or in, in my case, 20 years in order to see parole instead of doing a, a full 40 years, which, you know, I mean, I would, be, I would be eligible for parole already. It's about giving them an opportunity to prove themselves, to show that they're better people, that they're rehabilitated, and, and that they, they deserve a second chance at life. There's got to have been something different that I could have done. Maybe I still feel that he would have shot me, you know, at the very least, but I don't know that because I didn't try. I still don't know, you know, given the chance right now, would I, would I play the coward again? There's that chance. I want to say that I, want, I would be the hero and, and do differently. Do you feel in your mind that, that you served enough time? I think I've served enough time to have a chance at life. For the Woods, the dream now is to spend their lives together. She sends me pictures all the time from all around and just to go there and to, to watch her with her family and to give her something, you know, a, a piece of life that she's never had that she helped me have would, you know, that I would repay it that way. I would, you know, just try to make her happy. I'll we'll do anything for him, you know, and I'm not going to be intimidated or run off or, you know, no one's going to fight me down. I'm here for him for the long haul. There's a lot of open-minded people out there, and I, I wish there were more, you know, but I think there's enough to make a change and make a difference. The Woods hope enough of those will show up and be heard when the next Texas legislature begins in Austin, January 8th. From the beginning, the riches have only wanted justice for heaven. So far, there's been no reaction to Wood's efforts for freedom as both of Heather's parents have since passed away. Larissa hopes to be back in Texas in March to speak before a committee that could be going over those bills. The way things are now, it'll be 18 more years before Wood is eligible for parole.